At the Nature Friendly Farming Network, we want to support farmers on a journey towards sustainable farming systems which benefit nature, climate and their businesses. We've recently received funding from DERA to undertake biodiversity and carbon audits of 35 farm businesses in Northern Ireland, helping farmers to transition to more sustainable business models. Farming in Northern Ireland will face significant challenges, from changes in farming policy to warming climate and also loss of biodiversity. Many farmers are going to be making decisions that will shape their farms for years to come and they need up-to-date knowledge, information and advice in terms of being able to make those changes. We spoke with a number of farmers who are involved in this project to understand what they will do with the information that they got from their audits. So I really wanted to do the Nature Friendly Farming Network uh, auditing project when I found out about it, it as exactly what we wanted to achieve here on the farm. Uh, in coming here in the first year, uh, was all about observation really, uh, trying to sit and step back and look and see how things work, how the farm system currently operates, uh, what sort of baseline of, of management is. Uh, and really this year we wanted to start understanding a bit more what's going on uh, within our soils, within our hedgerows, uh, the quality and condition of our fields and pastures. So really trying to get a sense around the numbers, around our baseline, uh, so that we know what changes we're going to make to the system or what impact they'll have in the future. I decided to join NFFN mainly because of my passion for uh, farming with nature and through my environmental science degree. I've learned that farming will only thrive if we look after the land that we're using. So in order to continue keeping healthy soil, keeping ha healthy cattle, it, the only way to maintain this is helping the land that we work with and improving our our biodiversity and our carbon capture. The opportunity to come up to do the uh, carbon footprinting and the uh, evaluation on the wildlife and, and carbon on the farm. Uh, I went for it. the company that we supply the eggs to were very keen that went to it as well because they are also working on their carbon footprint and this sort of gives them a figure right across the whole sector you know from farm to fork uh, and see where efficiencies can be made, you know, where things can be changed that will help. I uh, wanted to uh, engage with other like-minded farmers and uh, I guess I wanted to find my tribe. I um, did want to change the way the farm was working and we're only a small farm but I thought that we had really good opportunities here to improve our biodiversity and bring back more wildlife here. Uh, we're um, very close to woodland and we have the Ballandary River and I just knew that there was a great scope to do more. The auditing results were very interesting, certainly lots of facts and figures there. Farmers are, in Northern Ireland especially uh, have a critical role in trying to uh, mitigate climate change and increased biodiversity and you know I've done it down here on a small scale as such there's no reason why larger farms aren't able to do it and aren't able to get the outputs that we are actually getting and mirror our system to a different system but yes they, it's critical. In the past I've had other carbon benchmarking data taken from that report I was advised that to be carbon neutral I would need to plant 20 acres of my farm into Woodland. Because I farm outside all year round and I don't house any of my stock, that would not have been feasible for me. With working with the Nature Friendly Farming Network, they have provided me more options and other alternatives to doing this, which would be more viable for my farm. Our plans after the audit for increasing biodiversity are really focused on soil and the biodiversity underneath the grass. Um, last year I took part in a course on regenerative farming and grazing. I can really see that those practices and the ethos of Nature Friendly Farming Network um, are the direction that, that the agriculture is going to go in and it really opened my eyes to the potential of every farm and the soil that we have. This farm has been set stocked uh, with dairy beef cattle for 30 years. Hopefully we'll lock out some paddocks uh, for haymaking so that we can actually let some of that grass get up and get all the benefits for insects, wildlife, bird life which come from having 
those taller covers on the farm, which, to be honest, we've not really seen much here because everything is either knocked out for silage uh, or is grazed off throughout the grazing season. So really that, moving to a rotational and hopefully in the future more mob stocking site system, if we can get the animal impact levels that, that we need for that, uh, is, is one of the biggest things. For biodiversity, our plan would be to probably reduce hedgerow cutting, leaving it for nested birds, and also maybe cutting not as close to the hedge. We obviously want to make a good hedge for protecting our, even in the arable land, protecting the crops, preventing soil erosion. And it's a good good windbreak even for the cattle and things. So hedges are a big, big asset to the farm and for nature. The Dexters have definitely helped the, the, the quality of the land. Uh, with them being light in their feet, uh, they don't poach as much as your larger cow would be and they will over time graze out the whole pasture and they won't leave anything behind them as such and that seems to work well for biodiversity. Uh, also when we're have a, we have a cutting platform here, we try to make haylage or a stemmy grass uh, which seems to suit their stomachs uh, much better and uh, in turn we've got a seed which is left behind for wildlife and for that biodiversity which is very very much part of our story. A native wildflower meadow or good strong diverse mix of grasses in a field will store considerably more carbon, uh, never mind the extra benefits that it has for the variety of wildlife that it will bring and uh, insects that um, will eat other insects that you know manage and look after your own pest control within the field and the diversity that's underground, the mix of uh, root depths that you will have, uh, the better fungal networks that you will have and really it um, the change from looking at a beautiful velvet, green, pristine field is that change of mindset to appreciate the beauty of this diversity and we need to understand it I think to, to appreciate it, what's happening. Really obvious thing to do is just like let's stop flailing our hedges every year because if we can get the biomass, uh, the density into those, we'll be locking up a lot more carbon uh, and also creating a lot more habitat for nature as well. So it's just a no-brainer. I mean, losing a metre and a half off the edge of your field around is not that's not going to break the bank from a grazing point of view, particularly if by our calculation just moving to basic rotational grazing, we're going to grow 50% more grass here anyway. Um, so uh, it's just, just, just a real no-brainer. The biodiversity was my aim for before I went into this here. Biodiversity has always been the thing on the farm is, you know, I've taken interest in the wildlife, you know, the birds and the animals that's on the farm here. Trying to work with them as workers work with my poultry, you know, and hopefully it all it all fits together and there's a place for us all. I suppose this is quite a new topic to many farmers and I think that the direction will only change with education. So I believe that the government should be educating farmers on how we can farm with a more environmental uh, steer. Um, I think to perhaps subsidise or incentivise uh, farmers to participate in carbon auditing would be really useful because it highlights to each farm what their contribution is and what their mitigations are. For me, the standout benefit of the Nature Friendly Farming uh, Networks audit uh, has been that I've got a baseline and we can't manage what we don't measure. So by having that baseline, it allows us to understand where we are now and where we might want to take that to. I think farmers can play a huge role in um, the future of our climate change. I think since COVID, we've already had a, a new wave of appreciation of um, farmers for food. Um, now I think we've, we've got to push that if we want to make these changes um, here, that we, we have to appreciate it's, it's the farmers that own the majority of the land and they're the ones that have the power to make that change. We have to appreciate that they still need to earn a living at the same time. It's already quite tricky for a lot of farms. It, so we have to support them and encourage them. You're very lucky when you own some land and uh, I think here in Northern Ireland you, you can grow up with it and take it for granted. But 
uh, we shouldn't. I feel incredibly lucky to have this opportunity and excited to make this change and to see what I can do. And we're only a couple of miles from town. If I can make this a nicer part of the world for people to enjoy and come and share it with me and appreciate it as they drive past, that would be, that would be mint. As you've seen, there are significant opportunities for farmers to help restore biodiversity, reduce carbon emissions and improve benefits to their businesses. But what's really important here is access to the right information, support and advice to make changes for the long term. We want to see future farming policies which help farmers to do this so that we can restore nature and farmland, reduce carbon emissions and deliver a better future.